So to move towards, uh, uh, towards this area, I want to start just with some basic intuitions for the way that I think about this medium, the way I think about uh, a meaning and how it's conveyed more generally. So we'll start with, with a kind of challenging question for you, which is, uh, so what does this sign mean? Uh, so someone said woman uh, here. <laughs> right, right. Someone said, I saw a sign like that uh, not too long ago. <laughs> right, right. So, uh, you know, so it's, it's, not, it's not controversial you know, for many people, but the question is, you know, how do we make sense of this particular sign? And, and so, of course, we're drawing upon some particular worldview and drawing some kind of specific concepts from that worldview that's being integrated with a sensory mental image. And so what I mean by that is we have a, men a mental image of what the sign could represent. We have the sensory image that's right there in front of us. And we immediately understand that sign as meaning something like a, a woman or, or referring to the, the fact that this is a place that, uh, that, that women can be. Uh, now you might say, uh, well, we don't all necessarily share the same, the same worldview, but something interesting that happens here is that even if you don't believe that women do or should wear clothes uh, uh, like this necessarily, it's not the fact that you couldn't immediately uh, apprehend the meaning of the sign. Now, uh, this sign, uh, however, is another sign that's actually uh, developed at the Indian Institute of Technology used in hospital systems in India that means the exact same thing. Right, so you have a similar kind of process, you know, the, the meaning and what I'm calling a phantasm for reasons that will become clear, uh, it happens in the same way. And this is, a, this is another sign that's used in Oman. Right, so, so we have another sign here. And so the idea is that, in fact, when we begin to look at this sign from multiple worldviews, some of the biases and, and, the, and the intrinsic beliefs built into the original one begin to be revealed. You know, because you didn't say to yourself, uh, was, uh, and that's what I'm calling a phantasm. Because in fact, it's a kind of semi-visible uh, uh, execution of, of uh, a, a worldview through the sensory mental image that we're encountering uh, out there uh, in the wild, so to speak. Because you could have thought that this is somebody wearing a kilt, this is somebody wearing a cape, a cape, right? Something like this. Uh, and in fact, interestingly, uh, you know, I wrote the, this book you know, back. Uh, well, it came out in 2013, but there's actually been an ad campaign that's all right taken advantage of this idea you know, recently. Right? It, it was never addressed. You know, so it's nice to see uh, that these ideas uh, uh, out there. Uh, and this is exactly the meaning. And the other idea is that. Also, phantasms uh, exist that encode worldview, but we can also develop phantasms that are new ones that are uh, a kind of empowering phantasm. So some of, the, some of the power of the computational system I'm interested in is that of revealing phantasms, also creating new phantasms, and developing critical awareness about them. Now, in terms of computing, of course, we rely upon these same kind of uh, ideas. Right, so an image like this, uh, uh, somebody being represented on, uh, an, as a Nintendo Ami character, and up through uh, images like this, uh, a kind of more robust representation, or an image like, like this. These come from uh, well-known Final, Final Fantasy uh, uh, role-playing games out of Japan. And uh, one of the issues that I'm interested in, though, is the fact that these kind of phantasms then uh, persist as people begin to use these uh, systems. And we know a lot about the kind of values that, go in, that, uh, that, that lie behind these, these kind of systems. Yeah, so this is a classic study by Kenneth and, and Mamie Clark, you know, start from the 40s, in which African-American school children were asked uh, famously, which doll looks like you? Which doll do you prefer? Which doll is a good doll? And uh, uh, with uh, uh, a high degree of probability, you know, uh, uh, they, they actually chose this doll that you see the kid choosing, uh, cho choosing here. Sometimes they ask, which doll looks nice? Which doll uh, uh, is a good doll? Now, which doll looks like you? you know, the few children that rebelled actually uh, ran out of the study you know, crying when they realized the fact that uh, you know, they're enmeshed within this kind of uh, worldview. And, so this, and the point here isn't just to recap the study, which is a kind of well-known study, but in the book, one of the things that I do is begin to think, how can we look at these phantasms in a semi-structured way that's useful for thinking about computing systems? And so this is just a, a kind of cursory breakdown, just thinking in terms of the types of elements, the attributes, and so forth, just to show that when we think about these issues on the computer, we actually have to think about them in a way that they're instantiated in data structures and the way that they're, that they're implemented when you begin to have this doll immediately apprehended as uh, being the, the nice-looking doll. Mm -hmm.